Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'd like to show you how to put a, a, a finally, and it's our video number six in our series in regard to the pressure plate, a pressure vessel, and a pressure plate vessel assembly that we're going to be putting together. And in this video, I'd like to ultimately show you how to put that assembly together. So right now, we've got our pressure plate done. We've got our pressure vessel done. Let's go and put those two together into an assembly. So what you do is you open up uh, assembly. You just go to file, you go to new. And if you have the tutorial tab uh, up here selected, we're just going to go to assembly. Very simple. And now remember, an assembly is nothing more than a blank template of which it's looking for parts to put into. And uh, right now we have two parts that we can put in here. Uh, one thing to make note of right now is we're not going to be creating our assembly uh, template file, which we will do uh, early next week. We're just going to go ahead and use uh, the, the assembly uh, file that they have embedded in SOLIDWORKS. We're going to go ahead and use that and use it just for demonstration for now. So, we have two different choices here. We can put in our pressure plate or we can put our pressure plate vessel in. We can put our pressure vessel in. I would suggest that we take the pressure vessel and put that in first. Uh, whatever we put in first is going to be a fixed element in our uh, assembly. So it becomes fixed to the origin, which means the front plane is fixed to the front plane right plane is fixed to the right plane of the first part we put in there and the top plane of our uh, assembly is fixed to the top plane or coincident or co uh, coplanar with the top plane of our assembly you know the, the top plane of our assembly is going to be coplanar with the top plane of our, our the first part that we put in there so to demonstrate that a little bit better if you go to view pull that down we're going to go to origins and you're going to be able to see the origin that we have here and what you do is you just click on the element you would have put in there first and these are elements, these are uh, models that we already have open and if they're not open, if you don't have these models open, you can go to the browse button and pick uh, the other model that you want in the location that you see fit. We're going to go ahead and left click once in the pressure vessel and just drag that out there. If we take our cursor and just drop it on the, our, and drop it on the origin that's in our, um, in our assembly you know, so what it does is it makes a coincident relationship with the origin in regard to our part. It puts those two together. That's one way to do it. You just take your, as long as your origin is on, you have to make sure that your origin is on by going to the view uh, pull down portion of our uh, pull down menu. You want to make sure that that's on, that our origins are showing. So we just click it here and it becomes fixed to the origin. It uh, centers it right in our screen and it's ready to go. And just to demonstrate what it does. If we were to click on all of our plans, for instance, if we took both of these uh, front plans and look at those, they're coincident. The two top plans are coincident, coplanar, and our two right plans are coplanar. That is the value of doing that, so that when we put our assembly together, that all the planes kind of line up. Again, it starts from the from the sketch level, it goes into the feature level or part level, and eventually it's making its way up to uh, the assembly level. We can use these planes and the symmetry involved with all the modeling we've done so far to our advantage so we don't have to create all this additional reference geometry as we go. That's the value of drawing things of symmetry if you can stay, if you can do that. Another way of doing it, if you're going to take that, uh, that element out, go to delete, and go to uh, insert components. Again, we're right back to that uh, screen in our properties. Uh, uh, portion or properties manager portion of our assembly file. We can take this, just click on that over here without even going over here. We can just go up to the green check mark and it does the same thing. And that's probably the faster way of doing it. So you'll notice that when we have an, an item into our assembly, it's got the bracketed F up here. That means it's fixed. It's fixed. It can no longer be moved. There are ways uh, of floating it if you want. If you right click on it, go to float. It will no longer be uh, confined to the to the origin. It's uh, floating around. It'll be free and loose, just like the other parts we put in until we start putting mates into them and uh, try to try to make them uh, fully defined. Okay, the next element we want to go in. go into insert uh, components. Let's take our pressure plate. Let's put that in here. This one we are going to do the check mark. We do the check mark because of our uh, top planes being uh, oriented in such a manner that uh, it'll actually become very close to being on the very top up here. It's not going to be exactly what we want, but if you go to the green check mark just to demonstrate that and go to one of our section views and take a look at that, there is going to be a gap. It quite literally put our top planes together. So this is the top plane here for our uh, pressure vessel. 
In our pressure plate, this is the top plane, but we do have some overlap here, which isn't really quite what we want. So we're going to right click on our pressure plate. We're going to float that. We're going to pull that out a little bit. One thing we want to do is uh, show our temporary axes. So go to View, Temporary Axes, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on this axis and our pressure plate, and one of the axes is associated with some of the features we have in our pressure vessel, and we're going to mate those and put those together. Now let's go to green check mark there again and turn off our section right now, just so, it's just so you can see what, uh, what it looks like. So that's free and floating. It is uh, confined to that axis, but there's one more relationship we want to put in here. We're going to click on this surface here, and this surface here, and we're going to make those. So now we have a uh, uh, our axes are uh, coincident with each other, so it has the ability to move around as if we're going to be tightening the screws on that. And um, yeah, and then the two tops of our uh, you know the top of our um, our vessel in regard to that threaded cut that we have in there and let's go ahead and take a look at that in a section move that around a little bit so you can see that a little bit clearer this surface here is now made into that surface up here so the, the, the surface that's in the top of that cut where the threads are going to be in regard to our vessel is going to be coplanar co with the surface here which is on the bottom of the, of the cut in regard to our pressure plate now we do have some features in here that are associated with our uh, threaded, uh, um, our cosmetic thread that we put in there. We can right click on those and uh, take care of those if you like. If you right click on them, we can uh, tell them to hide. You might want to hide these things in our, uh, in our assembly, but not hide them in our, um, in our part level. So we're going to go to the, go to the glasses and turn those off. And right now we can go ahead and go to the view and turn off our temporary axes. And here's one more. Uh, cosmetic thread we can turn off. It takes care of that and it's a little bit more clear now. We're good to view. We can also turn off our origins and that uh, cleans it up. Go back to um, our section view, turn off our section view and there's our elements. Now it looks like we don't have our material quite applied to this so if you right click it out we can go ahead and open out, up that part. Let's make sure that we have uh, the proper uh, uh, elements in here so that they both match. So I'm going to go to edit material and go back to alloy steel stainless apply and then close and we're going to go ahead and save this and it should update in our assembly everything we do in the part levels now is going to be updated in our assembly there well, that looks pretty darn good if we want to ultimately it's the last thing i want to show you here if we want to ultimately go ahead and fix this we can take the planes that are associated with that and fix them to the planes or uh, associate them and mate them with a coincident relationship with the plans of our assembly. So we're going to go open this part, we're going to take our front plane with the front plane over here, all we have to do is do that once with one of those plans, we don't have to do them both, and that should lock it into place. So there's three mates associated with this top piece, and of course we have a fixed mate uh, in regard to uh, the vessel that we put in first, and if you ever need to find the mates, you'll find them down here. So here's the three mates, we have an axial mate, we have a concentric, uh, coincident mate with those two surfaces and a coincident mate between the two planes that we just uh, established. So that's pretty much it. That's a short little lesson in assemblies. Hope you enjoyed these and we will talk to you soon.